Hello, and welcome back to the Battlefinds podcast. Here we talk about all sorts of cool battles, tactics, military leaders, and wars. If you want to see some of our previous episodes, I'd recommend checking out the Battle of Evesham, which is the battle after the Battle of Lewis, which we're going to be talking about right here on this episode of the Battlefinds podcast. Okay, so the Battle of Lewis was the first major battle of the Baron's War, the precedent to the Battle of Evesham, which I talked about the last episode. It was a very bloody battle, which was extremely close between the Royalists and the Rebel Barons. The leaders on the Rebel side were Simon de Montfort, Gilbert de Clare, and Nicholas de Segrave, while Royalists were led by Henry III, Prince Edward, and Richard of Cornwall. The Baronial or Rebel forces had around 5,000 men, while the Royalists had double, near 10,000 men. The background of this battle was that King Henry, King Henry III was a very unpopular monarch, so much so that the Lords rebelled against his leadership and started to gather their forces. Soon, the king was doing the same. The trustees were committed on both sides, and eventually the two armies met. King Henry was camped at St. Pancras Priory in Lewis, and Prince Edward was camped at Lewis Castle, 500 yards to the north with his cavalry force. Simon then approached the king to open negotiations, but was rejected. So later that night, he marched his army from Fletching to Um Hill, which surprised the royalists. That morning, on May 14, 1264 AD, the battle commenced. Uh, now on to the battle, the fun, cool, interesting part. So, on the royalist side, King Henry was set up in the center of his army, while Prince Edward was on the right flank, and Richard of Cornwall held command of the left. However, the barons held the high ground and distinguished their army with white crosses, which boosted their morale, as they thought that they were given a sense of divinity. Simon split his army into four parts. His son Henry commanded one portion, Gilbert de Clare commanded another portion, Nicholas de Grave commanded a third group of Londoners, and of course, Simon led the last group. The battle commenced when the barons attacked a group of royalist foragers. Prince Edward then led a cavalry charge against Segrave's Londoners in retaliation. They were on the left of the, fi- of the defensive line and soon broke and fled towards the village of Offham. However, Edward's cavalry force pursued them, which was a large downfall of the royalist force because it left the king's army unsupported by fast mobile troops. Henry and Cornwall then decided to lead a charge uphill against the baronial forces, who still had three quarters of their army, while the king's army had lost all of their cavalry force, which consisted of around a third of their army. This puts the barons at around 3,700 men, and the royalist force at around 6,600 men, a significant jump bump in the odds for the rebels, not to mention Cav being an essential and well-trained part of an army. So now the king's army was charging up the hill and emboldened men who thought they had a sense of divinity. Soon, Cornwall's third of the army, the left flank of the royalist force, fled down the hill and broke. The king's division kept fighting until forced to retreat by the arrival of de Montfort's reserve force. They then had to retreat and fight to the town of Lewis, where Edward's weary cab force tried to lead a counterattack. But by then it was too late and the king conceded and accepted the baron's request. So now we move on to the part of the podcast where I choose what I think that the Royalists could have done a little bit better. I believe that the first mistake that the Royalists made was having Edward keep following Seagrave's fleeing force. He obviously didn't have a very good hold on his men, and so they wanted to run down the fleeing opposition, basically, which is not good. You always want to have a well-trained force um, who can turn around and attack, and that's what I would have done. I would have turned around, attacked the left flank of the rebel force with Richard of Cornwall's division, and then proceed to crush the rebel force. That's not what happened, so now we move on to the aftermath. The aftermath. After the battle is over, the king signed the Mise of Lewis. Although the document has not survived, so we don't have it, but we know that he did sign it. He also accepted the provisions of Oxford, while Prince Edward was taken prisoner. This allowed Simon de Montfort to become the so-called uncrowned king of England and become the most powerful man in the region. 
Thank you for listening. If you want to support the podcast in any other ways, I have a Patreon. I also have a YouTube channel. So if you want to follow those, they should be linked.